Welcome to episode six of The Closest They Came, a series where we take a look back on the days when drivers, winless at NASCAR's highest level, came painfully close to etching their names into the history books. Today, we'll be looking back on Mike Skinner's race in the 2000 Cracker Barrel Old Country Store 500, taking this series to the Spring Atlanta race for the second time. After beginning his racing career on California dirt tracks, Skinner would make sporadic Cup Series starts in the late 80s and early 90s, with the majority coming in Fee Dixon's Mansion Motorsports ride, garnishing limited results. Joining Richard Childress Racing in the new NASCAR Super Truck Series in 1995, Skinner would find his first NASCAR success, winning the 1995 Series title along with a total of 16 victories by the end of 1996. Childress and Skinner would make the jump into the Cup Series full-time in 1997. By the time the spring of 2000 rolled around, Skinner had earned 9 top 5 and 26 top 10 finishes in 113 starts. He would qualify in 14th, averaging 191.080 miles per hour, around the 1.54-mile oval. He was fast from the start, entering the top 10 within the first 10 laps. Looks like Bill's already found that the top groove is coming in a little bit early. Moves way up on the high side of the racetrack, while Mike Skinner, right ahead of him there in the low sponsored car, number 31, got to the inside and picked up a position. So Skinner to eighth, and Bill Elliott to the ninth spot. Dale Jr.'s crash in turn two on lap 29 would bring most of the field to pit road. A solid stop would move Skinner up to third for the restart on lap 33. Jeff Gordon will win the race off of pit road. Go, 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 go. Well, right. the green flag comes out to the field. Dale Earnhardt Jr. sits on pit road. After quickly overtaking Jeff Gordon for second, he would begin to challenge Mark Martin for the lead. Very, very powerful. Well, then Skinner drives to the inside. I'm not sure that Jeff Gordon was expecting that, but Skinner goes out on the apron and takes second spot away, and here comes his teammate, Nadeau, to take third away from Jeff Gordon. And now Mike Skinner closes in on the leader, Mark Martin. This is on board with Martin looking back to the second place car. Look at Skinner close up right in the center of the corner. On board with the Lowe's on board. The last time by, Skinner was about set three quarters of a mile per hour faster than Mark Martin. After trading back and forth with Martin, he would settle into the lead for the next 15 laps. Wally Dallenbach Jr. would spin down the front stretch on lap 55, leading to another pit sequence. And you're not going to believe how close this 93 car comes to him. Watch this. Just four tires, no adjustment whatsoever, not even air pressure on Mike Skinner. That's how good his road Chevrolet is. Down and away, great pit stop for Skinner. Bill Elliott would overtake the lead, opting for a two-tire stop. Has gone to the garage area, and so has Jeremy Mayfield. And Mike Skinner goes to the bottom of the racetrack and takes the lead from Elliott. Skinner would face a formidable challenge by Jeff Burton on lap 64, giving up the lead. Jeff Burton has a good run down the backstretch. He'll stay high on the track, entering turn number three. The 99 car winner last week in Las Vegas. The rain short event and the million dollar bonus. Burton's time out front will be brief, however, as he would crash from the lead on lap 69. Skinner's on board camera on the Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse on board. First thing Skinner said was is the 99 cut a tire. So he cut a tire, he's in the wall and he hit hard. Now they were they used what he saw to make their decision on whether to change two or four tires. They weren't just gonna change two right sides when they saw that, they said no. We're not taking any chances. We're going to change four tires. Skinner is down and away. The race would resume on lap 78. With his car running great, he would take off, remaining out front for the next 61 laps. Back on lap 69, our current leader, Mike Skinner, was right behind Jeff Burton when Burton's car abruptly hurt into the wall. Now, Skinner hit the radio and said, that looks just like my crash here two years ago. That radio communication worried Skinner's crew because they said maybe, just maybe, seeing that will conjure up visions of the accident he had here in Atlanta back in the spring of 1998. 
Luke Skinner suffered a shoulder injury and a rib injury and an injury to his right knee. They were concerned that it might affect Skinner psychologically, but that has not been the case. Skinner right now is quicker than he has been all race long. In fact, just the opposite has happened. They are trying to get Mike Skinner to slow down and back off the pace. It didn't affect him psychologically or that possibly. Maybe he's had a short memory. But up front, it is Mike Skinner who enjoys a three-second lead over his Richard Childress teammate, Dale Earnhardt. He would give up the lead to Pitt on lap 132. In, here's Jerry. 42-year-old Mike Skinner trying to get his first Winston Cup victory in his 114th start. Dale Jarrett is in as well. Left side tire going on Mike Skinner's car. Slight air pressure, a little tight exit in the corner. Skinner is down and away. He would retake the lead on lap 141 and remain out front for the next 43 laps. Pennzoil Copter Cam is bringing you our overhead shots today following the leader of the race, Mike Skinner, and the car right behind him is Terry Labonte, who's in the 16th position, so now 15 cars are on the lead lap. Meanwhile, back on the racetrack, Mike Skinner continues to lap cars. He just went around the number four of Bobby Hamilton, the 15th place car, 14 now on the lead lap. Scott Pruitt would crash on lap 183, bringing the leaders into the pits once again. A slow stop by the 31 crew would hand the lead to Bobby Labonte. And Mike Skinner said, oh, gone it, I had such a lead. That's six seconds, which right now is going to be six feet when Labonte closes up on the back bumper of me. Meanwhile, the field is bunched up behind the pace car. And pit road is now open. And so here come those on the lead lap. Only 10 on the lead lap at the moment. Skinner, Labonte. Here comes Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt. Very quietly, this is one of the best pit crews on the 18 car on pit road. Up on the air pressures, track bar adjustment for Bobby Labonte. He said it's like driving on four flat tires after you've been out there for a while. To Jerry Punch. Skinner, Labonte, and Gordon, all three on the pit. Skinner down and away. Bobby Labonte scoots back. Great pit stop for the Interstate Batteries crew. And Gordon in the car number 21, the Mark Chevrolet, heads down pit road. Four tires for the leader, Mike Skinner. Very minimal, I should say very minimal, air pressure change. You see both Skinner and Jeff Gordon both that time had slow pit stops, folks. Used to 19, 20 second pit stops were good. Skinner would take back the lead on lap 190. He would encounter the first possible issue of the day on this run when his car would give him a low voltage reading. Jimmy Spencer trying to get a lap back and we see Mike Skinner trying to get the lead from Bobby Labonte. And on the inside line, Skinner grabs the lead. Get an update from the pit. Where the first we go to Jerry Punch. Following that pit stop, Larry McReynolds, Mike Skinner, crew chief, asked him, said, is everything okay? And Mike said, we got a light flashing on the dash. The light flashing indicates low voltage on the car. Mike reached up and cut the switch off, which controls the driver's air conditioning or a driver fan that blows on the driver. Once he cut that off, the light stayed on, indicating the voltage came back up. But they are watching very closely for a possible alternator and or battery problem developing on the car number 31. His teammate Earnhardt would begin to make his presence felt on this run. Look who has closed in on his teammate, Dale Earnhardt. We talked in the opening of the show about the veterans who are showing a reemergence of strength this year. And this guy has to be at the top of the list. The yellow would come out once again for Matt Kenseth's engine failure, setting up a battle for the lead between the teammates on lap 207. They would make contact on the backstretch, much to the chagrin of Earnhardt. Mike Skinner, Dale Earnhardt, and Bobby Labonte come out in that order. And once again, we'll watch the battle off pit road. We see Earnhardt down pit road, the dark car coming down pit road slowly at 45 miles per hour. Here comes Bobby Labonte. But as he accelerates, he's trying to get alongside Earnhardt, but Skinner drives out in front of those two, and it's Earnhardt to that white line. What you may not have seen was an incredible pit stop by Mike Skinner's low Chevrolet team. They came in, put four tires on the car, filled it full of gas in 15.2 seconds. And as they dropped the jack, Mike Skinner, the driver, began to scream, great job, great job. He screamed, you guys are awesome, all the way down pit road. Well, guys, Mike Skinner and Dale Earnhardt are teammates. And a moment ago, Larry McReynolds said that told Skinner, he said, you know, oh, Earnhardt's probably going to try to get by and lead a lap. And Skinner said, you know what? I'd let him by and let him lead a lap. The only problem is he's not going to let me back by. So I got to try to battle him as best I can. So even in the same team, we're going to see a war here on the restart. Here's the green.
Oh, here comes Earnhardt. He's got to run off two. Watch this down the back stretch. Oh, some contact. And look at the damage to the right side of Earnhardt's car. And these are teammates. Richard Childress can't be happy about that. And I'm with his car owner and also Skinner's car owner, Richard Childers. Richard, first of all, how how bad do you think the damage is on Earnhardt's right front after that contact with Skinner? Well, we couldn't tell. He just asked. We got our spotters looking. It definitely hurt the uh, front end arms pretty good. Okay. You're going to have to have a meeting with those guys and uh, discuss it? Hey, they're big boys. They know what race is all about. <laughs> The situation would develop through the caution for Wally Dallenbach's second incident of the day. Wally Dallenbach again. He spun earlier in the race, coming off corner number four. This time it's wall contact. And Earnhardt was very animated when he came up alongside his teammate, Mike Skinner. Watch the uh, fist waving. I think he was just asking him to take a look at the right front fender on his car and let him know how bad it was. Oh, yeah. You... <laughs> how about my fender? There it is. Yeah, see, so he's pointing, but it's, well, it's probably, no, I don't think so, right? I think he's pointing, he's going to say, look, don't be blocking me anymore. The race would resume once more on lap 218. Skinner would hold the lead until lap 232 after being run down by Bobby Labonte. 1.3 seconds over Bobby Labonte, and Mike Skinner has led 166 laps so far. We'll take a break and be back with more of the Cracker Barrel Old Country Store 500. Now, while we were in break, we had a change of lead. Remember Mike Skinner had over a second lead? Well, it diminished rapidly, and Bobby Labonte came like a rocket ship out of the second corner, down the back stretch, and at the end of the back stretch, took the lead from Skinner. Didn't see anything, but all of a sudden Skinner is losing he's now a second and two tenths behind bobby labonte could be just a track change they've changed tires could be just a little bit of air pressure that set might be just a little bit tighter larry was talking about stagger now when he was talking about stagger he he's means in measuring it's so small of a difference sometimes you have to measure it in millimeters mm. exactly ray and i think what mike's experiencing right now for the first time today he's a little bit tight coming off the corner he can't get back in the throttle like he would like to be Coming up off the corner. That's why his lap times have slowed down. Todd Bonine's turn four incident on lap 263 would bring out the seventh caution of the day, drawing the leaders back into the pits. Skinner would come off pit road in third, lining up behind Labonte and Earnhardt. His team had taken a big swing at the car in an attempt to get the handling back to where it had been earlier in the day. The track is clean because these other guys are on the car coming down pit road. Mike Skinner half around a bite out of the right rear, air pressure left rear. Skinner down and away. He was a little bit tight coming off the corner. Earnhardt beats Skinner out and does Bobby Lovato. Let's get out to Jerry Punch. On top of Mike Skinner's pit box with crew chief Larry McReynolds. And Larry, the most significant adjustments you made all day, you made a moment ago with wedge and tire pressure, your hand was forced. Yeah, I mean, we had to, Jerry. It looks like the racetrack is starting to tighten up a little bit as it's got more and more rubber down on it. The track's cooling down a little bit. Uh, you know, get so afraid of jumping across the fence, making an adjustment. You want to make sure maybe the next set of tires isn't a little looser, a little tighter. We debated about trying another set of tires, but the problem is this may be the last set. Your driver sits third. Who'll be tougher to pass, the three or the 18? <laughs> They're both going to be pretty tough, I guarantee you. They both are awfully strong. Obviously, looks like as the races went on, Bobby has got stronger. He pretty much owns this place. He's showed that a lot. So uh, we're just catching them, then getting by and be another thing. Restart would come on lap 272. Both Earnhardt and Skinner would sneak past Labonte quickly, putting the two RCR cars out front right before a pileup would occur on the front stretch on lap 275. Ninth position. Elliott has not had a top 10 in seven starts here. Dale Earnhardt is taking the lead from Bobby Labonte, and Earnhardt goes to the front. Some of the young guys have had outstanding performances here in the first three races, but also some of the old Wiley veterans, and Dale Earnhardt finds himself at the front of the field, and the crowd is going wild. The caution is out again. Tony Stewart has crashed. Come on, come on, come on. Several cars involved. Skinner's car would come back to life on the lap 284 restart, 
retaking the lead shortly thereafter. Broke an exhaust header, broke the whole top of the header out and it caught the seat on fire, caught the floorboard on fire. There's smoke, flames, everything inside the car, so I had a pit. And uh, we got back out there, we couldn't get it fixed. And we started tailback, worked on a little bit more, trying to cure it, and ended up getting in that wreck out there. But uh, we're okay. We're going to try to get out and make a couple laps, fix some positions up. And a 31 car is taking the lead. Do you see Tony Stewart in the care center, Rusty? Yeah, he was laying in there. He's uh, He'll be okay. He just knocked him silly, I think. He was, he, uh, he was kicking around and moving around. I, I've been beat up like that before, and it takes a little bit to catch your breath, but I think he's fine. So that's word from Rusty Wallace as Mike Skinner has once again taken the lead here at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Our computer shows the last lap that Mike Skinner ran over 187 miles per hour. That's the fastest lap I've seen all day. This time he goes by, it's 186.7, and Earnhardt ran over 186 miles per hour. Trying to leave Dale Earnhardt, but he can't do it. Now to John Curtin once again. During that last caution, while Dale Earnhardt was riding around behind the pace car in the lead, he talked to his car owner, Richard Childress, and he knew that Mike Skinner was a little bit faster than him, and he told Childress, said, let Mike know that I'm not going to block him, that if he wants to take the lead, he can come around me. I'm not going to block him. He says, we both have good race cars. We both have a shot to win, but one of us, one of the Childress cars, needs to win this race this afternoon. So Earnhardt putting aside the anger he felt earlier when Skinner blocked him down the backstretch and caused some damage to the right front fender to do the good for the team and allow his teammate out front. And likewise, during that caution, Richard Childers came on the radio of Mike Skinner and said, remember now, we're going to win this race. The idea is for one of you guys to win this race, the other to finish second, and I don't care which one. He said, guys, be smart. The concern right now for Mike Skinner's pit is that they want him to take care of those tires, and I think uh, Larry McReynolds likes to see Skinner out front, but a little bit concerned about the pace he is setting right now, still with some 30 laps to go here at Atlanta. Skinner has never won a NASCAR Winston Cup race. He has only won one in the NASCAR Bush Series. That was here a year ago. Michael Waltrip's engine failure on lap 298 led to the ninth caution of the day. Skinner would retain the lead through the ensuing pit stop, setting him up nicely for the run to the checkers. Earnhardt and Skinner coming down almost side by side. Earnhardt the first to flank off. Here's John. And Chocolate Myers just waits patiently with the gas can to see if they put any in it at all. As soon as the caution waved, Earnhardt said, I want four tires. Now Chocolate comes in and puts in the gas to Bill Weber. Head stop so critical here. Up one round on the track bar for Bobby Labonte. It'll be four tires and fuel. They take the tear away off the left side of the windshield. Earnhardt's away to Jerry. This race could be won on pit road. Left side tires going on Mike Skinner's car. No adjustment. Earnhardt is away. The left way. Skinner is down. And Mike Skinner will be the first off of pit road in that final stop of the day. The restart would come with 21 laps to go, and he would once again pull out to a healthy lead before it all came undone. Flag waves. Coming out of lap 304. Rusty Wallace came back onto the racetrack for a while, but now has gone back to the garage area. He ran some laps and perhaps moved up in the standings, but now calls it quits. He will finish in 32nd spot. Here comes Earnhardt up on the top side of the racetrack, three wide. Now that is a battle there between the 22 and the 94 for position. Neither one of them are on the lead lap, but they're still battling for position, and so is the 40 car of Sterling Marlin. Up front, Skinner, Labonte now second, and Earnhardt third. Now we got the top three cars, nose to tail. Ray, you talked about in one of our shows at the very top of the day. Well, here comes Earnhardt on the inside, a battle for second position. Earnhardt has the run, just 21 laps to go. He takes second from Bobby Labonte. Well, you talked about these guys not getting a chance. And Ernest Skinner is off the pace. Skinner is off the pace. With less than 20 laps to go, it's over for Skinner, Doc. Mike Skinner has lost the engine. Unbelievable. He just said, guys, I want it. I want it badly. We've waited a long time. I want this win. He was just congratulating the crew as they started back to green. And now, just that quickly, with 19 laps to go in its 114th start, it has all gone away.
And Mike Skinner has climbed from his car. You can see the trail of oil back here in the garage area. Mike, any indication that the motor was going to blow or did it just go all at once? Pow. No warning whatsoever. I uh, run the low Chevy just as hard as it'll go all day long. This thing was awesome, I'm telling you. We uh, he was fixing to see about an 85-foot wide Monte Carlo there for 20 more laps, but it's just all we had. I mean, the thing come up about 20 laps short or something, but uh, I'm proud of the engine guys. I'm proud of these guys in the fab shops at RCR. This is a brand-new race car. The first lap it hit on this racetrack was, like, fastest, first fastest or second fastest, and uh, they've done an awesome job all weekend. We struggled a little bit qualifying, but... Uh, pretty old stout car i'll tell you it's it's a shame i don't know what i've done but i'm sure sorry i i just i got a monkey on my back i'll tell you now, what about the uh thing with earnhardt i heard you apologize to him you just got a little bit too excited at that point no i, I crashed my mom to win my first race <laughs> i mean i dale did what he had to do and i did what i had to do it's nothing he wouldn't have done to me and uh, I mean, he's my teammate, and I wouldn't wreck him, and it was ter too early in the race to, to be wrecking anybody, but I blocked him, and uh, he probably was a little further alongside of me than I thought, but uh, looking at the bumper, he wasn't too far up there, but, uh, you know, he, he raced me clean. When, it, when the shoe was on the other foot, he gave me plenty of room, and uh, my hat's off to Dale Earnhardt, and I sure hope he wins this race. He's uh, been an inspiration. I, this, you know, a few years ago, they, I figured I was going to name this place Earnhardt Speedway because he won all the races here. And then this kid named Bobby Labonte came along in this damn Pontiac. And we've had trouble with this guy, I'll tell you. But I thought we was going to put the low Chevy in uh, victory lane today, but wasn't meant to be. All right, back upstairs. Also worth an honorable mention was his late race charge in the 2000 Die Hard 500, where he would give Jeff Gordon a run for his money. is up high with Terry Labonte, and Ward Burton slides down into third position. And here they go. Jeff Gordon goes down to block the advance of Mike Skinner. Skinner rolling back to get that push off of 22. Side-by-side -side battle for fourth position. Mike Skinner looks like he's got a good run. Coming off corner number four. We'll see what he can do. There's Mark Martin and Dale Earnhardt running in the middle of this pack now. Well, Skinner can't make an advance here. They're going to come down and complete lap number one out of 85. We've got three to go at Talladega. And here comes Jimmy Spencer. Remember this Kmart Ford. He went so strong earlier today. He's fought his way back. He's fighting out to about the seventh or eighth spot. Well, here comes Earnhardt. That's going to slow the progress. Of, and here they go. Irwin trying to get on the inside. Can't make it. Oh, some contact between the 31 and the 24. Now, DJ moves over and says, let these guys go and figure out who's going to win this thing. He says, gentlemen, battle it out for yourselves. But Looking at just two laps to go. Everybody stays in line, and Jeff Gordon takes about a one car length advantage over Skinner. And Jeff Burton will head for the high line. Let's see who goes with him. It'll be Spencer. Wow. Who will win it, ladies and gentlemen? Take your pick. Again, Kenny Irwin down to the inside. Jeff Gordon, the 24 car, has won, what, 49 races? The 31 car of Mike Skinner has never won a race. I'm talking about a NASCAR Winston Cup points paying race. Yep. They remain in the same order. Well, and this time Gordon comes up the hill. I thought Skinner could not quite make it. And they're looking at the white flag. We've got one more lap to go at Talladega. Jeff Gordon completes lap number 187 in the lead. Skinner is second. Kenny Irwin down on the low side in third. Ward Burton up high and losing spots. Can Mike Skinner make a move? And can Kenny Irwin make a move? They're down the back stretch for the final time. Gordon keeps the car low on the racetrack. Nobody makes a move yet. Will anyone make the move before they hit the start-finish line? 
to the inside of Mike Skinner. Nothing going there. Dale Earnhardt is up on the high side in the battle for third position. He's got a good run up there. Remember what Mike Skinner said? He'd wreck his mother to win a race. Let's see what happens. Gordon has the lead as they come down through the trioval. And Jeff Gordon is back. He's going to win the Die Hard 500. Skinner would claim victories in a pair of exhibition races in Japan in the late 90s. Skinner stays in first. Here comes Gordon after him. Into turn one. Jeff Gordon with 13 wins this year. Real Mike bad. Skinner, who won in Japan last year, his only major win at Suzuka on the road course. Boy, now trying to be that first winner on a super speedway in Japan. These two Chevrolets are so equally matched right there. Gordon's a little better in the center part of the corner. Mike Skinner a little better as they exit the corner. One to go here, be smooth. Hit your mark down here. Keep it on the bottom of three and four. Taking the white flag. Taking that mark into turn number one. Hit it right on the spot. Skinner, who came out of his turn two on the second lap of practice and slapped the wall. All right, he pulled two. it about two car lane. Be smooth down here. Keep it on the bottom. Skinner protecting that bottom. Final moments. Turn three. Gordon turns it up. Here he comes, cranking it up on the bottom. Inside Moving corner, closer. Inching it up. Here Clear. they come for the finish. Adam Skinner Moore. stays in yeah, front. Got him. We beat that little <laughs> All right. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> Very good. Adam Moore, good job, guys. This son of a bitch pushed like a plow. Oh, oh, I boy. know you hate to hear it, but she pushed bad. Good. I Very enthusiastic about, about this victory down, down there, aren't they? My Polish victory lap. Every driver I win my first race with, I want a Polish victory lap. Show them what one's about. You got her, bud. Anything you say, Larry. We said we'd win a race before the year was over, and we did it. We the tea time champ. Now, God almighty, this is bad to the bone, boys. <laughs> His career would see a resurgence in the late 2000s when he would return to the truck series and run seven full-time seasons driving for Bill Davis and Randy Moss, earning 12 more wins in that span. He would make his final Cup Series start at Michigan in 2012, driving for Mike Curb, wrapping up his career with a total of 10 top 5 and 39 top 10 finishes. Though Mike Skinner would see a great deal of success throughout his broader racing career, breaking through to victory lane in the Cup Series was unfortunately not to be. With no shortage of speed or talent, luck would come in the way at Atlanta in the spring of 2000, on a day when he was without a doubt the class of the field. Mm -hmm.